What's going on, everybody? You know what I'm saying? Y'all see I'm with my lovely wife. You know what I'm saying? Um, so in this video today, this is our marriage testimony. Um, it's going to be from from the time that we got married. Matter of fact, even before that, the courting process, all the way to how we is right now. Give me a hand. Lord, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for this time, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would just bless this video and bless everybody that watch and ask that you give people answers regarding marriage, regarding everything that they've been asking you, Lord, and I ask that you let the Spirit of the Lord flow. In your name we pray, amen. So long story short, we met, you know what I'm saying, um, and the Lord, he basically told both of us that we is each other kingdom spouse, you know what I'm saying? Um, the way how the Lord spoke to me, he gave me a vision, you know what I'm saying, of Ashley, and I seen, basically it was a vision of, um, I was preaching on the stage, and then I seen her sitting next to me, and she was looking at me, and then I seen the word big across my face that said kingdom marriage, you know what I'm saying, and then I started having multiple dreams about the same thing, like marriage, this is who God want me to be with, you know what I'm saying, um, for her it was the same it wasn't necessarily visions it was dreams God would give her dreams all the time he would give her dreams about this is who I want you to be with he would place things on her heart heavy you know what I'm saying and I also had a lot of confirmation through other people and it was like they were basically things that the Lord was already trying to tell me but I was too afraid to like um I was too afraid to like actually think that that was coming from the Lord. But then I started having a bunch of dreams and um, it was just confirmation that, but aside from all of that, I already knew in my heart, like after we, like after he told me about the visions and stuff like that, I feel like I, I kind of already felt it in my heart almost instantly. It was like, it was like, Hmm, the Lord's been saying this, and I don't know. I just felt like in my heart it was finally somebody that I can 100% trust and not be afraid to, like, go forth with it. The Lord, he basically told us, he was just like, you know, I want y'all to get married, and this is who y'all supposed to be, you know, y'all supposed to be with each other. Um, long story short, when we got married, it's crazy because I remember the day we got married, Right after we got married, like literally right, because we went to the courthouse right after we got married. We went to, we was in Atlanta at the time, and we went out to eat at Magiani. And when we came out, it was a big rainbow in the sky. And I, I still got the video on my phone to this very day. And my mom even told me, she said, when her and my dad got married, it was a rainbow in the sky after they got married. So the rainbow represented a covenant with the Lord, and that God was pleased that I did this. You know what I'm saying? Um, again, you got to think, a lot of people in this day and age, we live in 2024, a lot of people, they, the last thing they think about is marriage. Um, you know, people ain't thinking like that no more. But God is trying to bring people back to that standard. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, and the main, the, main, the main portion of this video is going to be how marriage has been since. Since then. We've been married... Almost three years. So July twenty third, that'll make um three years. Um, so I can share a little bit, and then you know she'll share some. So I was in Georgia with my mom and my dad. You know what I'm saying? And um, the Lord actually told me to tell my wife. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I take that back. The Lord had been putting on my wife. He said, I want you to move to Atlanta. This is crazy. I wanted to say this because um, I was already, so like before we were in the courting process, when we were like just friends, I guess you want to say, um, I was already planning on moving there because it was either going to be there or Florida, but I was already planning on moving because of the line of work that I do. I was making good money there, but I felt like, with the type of things that I do, I would make so much more money uh, doing it in places like Atlanta or Florida. So those are the three places that I already had in mind. And I was like, I'm going to save up and eventually move because 
where I was from, which is Nebraska, it's fine, but it's just like, I felt like, because I had my daughter at the time, it was just me and her, I felt like I could make so much more money there, and it's not all about money, but I felt like as far as like where my career and everything was going, I could take care of my daughter better if I were to um, do the same thing I was doing, but doing it in a, in a different city. So I was already planning on uh, moving. I already had my head on moving out of Nebraska for like so long. So it was just crazy that um, the Lord was speaking to him about about having me move there. Before she moved, actually. So what it, well, actually what ended up happening was I ended up moving to well, I ain't moved to Nebraska, but I drove to Nebraska to stay with her because her lease was ending. So I basically came there to help her move. After so we got married. After we got married. So I drove to Nebraska. That was a 14-hour drive. I drove to Nebraska. Um, and I remember um, drove to Nebraska. Her, she had like a month left to stay in her apartment. So um, she was there. Um and I, like I said, I drove to help her move, so we stayed in her apartment for about a month. Uh, it was cool. Yeah, it was about a month. It was cool. Well, it was like three weeks, a couple weeks. Um, it was cool. It was nice. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was around her family and stuff like that because her family was, you know, um, her mom was introducing me to, you know, certain family members and stuff like that. Um and I remember I met her brothers, I met her grandma, I met um, her aunts and stuff like that. And I remember um, when it was time for us to move all her stuff out, we moved all her stuff out. It was just me and her, and then her brother eventually came. I had to get a moving truck. She was stressed out about it. Um, and then we eventually ended up moving all her stuff to her mom's garage, and then we had to drive back to Atlanta because we had got approved for an apartment. We were staying in Norcross, so that's like Peace Street, Peace Street Corner. So we was like on the outskirts of the city. Um, it was nice, it was nice, but I ain't like that apartment. I don't recommend nobody living there. Cause folks was, just, you you would think it's a nice area, cause it is. But from time to time, like I, I did a YouTube live one time, and people were shooting on my live. Like it was outside shooting. You remember that? People were shooting. I heard pop, pop, pop. And it's crazy because I started smiling. And I looked at Ashley, she started smiling. I said, you heard it? She said, somebody shooting. I said, I know. But stuff happened. Um, but as far as like marriage wise, the marriage was good. And it also was like a very um, special point in time for me because I feel like the transition of like going from being so independent and just on my own all the time to now I'm starting a new chapter with my kingdom spouse. So it was like I was stepping into another chapter of what the Lord was calling me to do, which was to be a wife. So even though um, it was a lot of changes moving to that apartment, I want to say it was so beautiful because it was us starting the beginning of doing our lives together and starting that with our apartment that we moved in and it was just so nice um to get you know to start to understand what marriage is all about and just getting to know each other even more it was it was a really nice point in time it was very new and fresh and um yeah we was in our honeymoon phase you know what i'm saying um and like I said, the Lord, you know, he blessed us. He was blessing us financially. We had our own paying for the bills and stuff like this. She was working downtown at Lush Nail Bar um, in Atlantic Station. That's what she was working at, you know what I'm saying? Um, and like I said, it was it was good. And, you know, she had a daughter, you know, and I took her in as my own, you know what I'm saying? Um, and like I said, it was uh, – it was just a transition because I, I had never been a father to anybody before. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I was doing YouTube. Um, and then eventually her mom ended up taking her daughter back with her. And I know why the Lord did that because the Lord wanted us to have our time being married. 
You know what I'm saying? So it was like two months. It was like from October to the middle of January. Um, yeah, it was like from October to the middle of January. It was just like it was just us. And we was always, you know, going out to eat. We was always doing stuff. Um, and then uh, stuff started happening in the apartment, you know, like, you know, just spiritual warfare, like enemy trying to attack us with sleep paralysis and stuff like that. And we steady going in for the Lord. I'm doing three-day fast. I'm doing all types of fasts because that's what the Lord called me to do. Um, and then um, – we was we was we was trying for a baby and um she couldn't get pregnant at first because the crazy thing about it she was she was having pregnancy symptoms basically right after we got married and i'm like okay you pregnant because you having all these pregnancy symptoms but the test keeps saying negative so long story short what the lord did we started to try and um for like some months it was how many months was it it was from Okay, so it was from August to December. We would try and we would pray and nothing was happening. <laughs> but I always felt like the Lord wanted me to expand my family because after I had my daughter, I used to tell myself, like, I'm, I'll am i never be able to have kids anymore, even though I always dreamed of having a bunch of kids. I was like, this, I probably need to give that dream up now. And... Um, and I knew I always wanted more kids, but I'm like, okay. She got to the point where she would beg for a sibling all the time, like all the time. She would she would have dreams about it, and she would cry to me. She would come crying to me like, I want a brother or a sister, and it would just like <laughs> hurt my heart so much. But also it was like, you know, I would want that for us too. So um, the Lord put it on our hearts. Of course, we prayed about it and stuff first, but um, we felt that the time was okay. And um, it just wasn't happening. And so the Lord put it on my husband's heart that maybe I needed to fast to focus on the Lord and seek him out, um, you know, because when we seek him, he gives us the desires of our heart. And um, it was like right after I did my fast, I got pregnant. And it was just such an exciting uh, point in our marriage because I knew also that Jalen wanted uh, kids, like a bunch of kids. <laughs> and um, so it was, it was really beautiful to find that out. I remember us going to, we went to like those little clinics multiple times and I remember being sad from them telling me, like, <laughs> that I'm not pregnant. I was like, oh, okay. And we just kept trying, and they, they kept telling me no. And then I think it was, what day was it when we found out? I, oh, okay. Yeah, so it was like that. No, it was like the end of December. Or maybe it was the middle of December. So my mom still had my daughter for Christmas, I believe. And it was Christmas Day when I told my family that I brought it to him the next morning. And um, we were just, like, so happy. But how did you feel? Like I mean, when she handed me the test, she, before she handed it to me, she said, babe, I got something to tell you. And then she showed me the test, and I started smiling. I said, I told you. And then she started crying. Um, but I knew, you know, like I said, it was all tears of joy and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, when it come to her, like I said, it's one of them things where, Cause I remember the Lord told me, He said, "Tell Ashley to do a three-day fast," and then He was like, "She gonna get pregnant." Probably about a couple weeks after that, she ended up getting pregnant. And I told her, I said, "The Lord don't tell no lies. God is not a man that He should lie." You know what I'm saying? Um, and and this is an encouraging word to anybody that's not even looking just to get pregnant, but anybody that's believing in God for something. You gotta know who your God is. You gotta gotta know who the God is that you serve. God is never gonna leave you. To, high, to be high and dry He ain't never just gonna leave you out hanging Yes it may be certain times He'll test your faith He'll allow certain things to happen But as far as you being in situations Where you feel like you have nothing God is just simply testing your faith And you have to keep going No matter how tough it gets No matter how hard it gets Cause we done been there We done been way up We done been in rock bottom So I know from first hand experience How tough it is 
And this is the thing, it's the reason why the Bible says many is called, few is chosen, because everybody has a call of God, but it's only going to be few people that accept the call. So you have to be willing, you got to be willing to go through the fire. Don't nobody want to be put in the fire, because it's not easy, but it's worth it. Also, I feel like it was a test of my faith because um, I had miscarried before, and um, some of you might know if you have been through miscarriage, you start to feel like it was something wrong with you. Like So for a long time, I used to think I just didn't carry. Like I used to think that, you know, Aria was my miracle baby, and then after that, that was that. Like I used to think that... Um, I'm, I I would probably miscarry again. And so I feel like when I got pregnant with Judah, it was also another test because I felt I would get so paranoid about if something would happen to the baby or if I were, if I were to miscarry or something crazy like that. Um, and the whole process was a test because um, some of you might know my pregnancy with Judah was so rough. It was probably the lowest my health has ever been in my entire life and i almost lost my life and i and he almost lost his life during the process um so i only that is only god that kept us because i had so many complications and um yeah even when he was born we couldn't even take him home so i feel like it the entire process was just like okay, you guys are starting your family together. Let's see how much faith you guys have in me of starting your family together. And um, it was really rough on us, but we always kept our faith. We always prayed. We always prayed over um, the baby and myself. And um, it was it's just another testimony of what the Lord can do and um how important it is to keep your faith during those times because many of those times I could have been like this is too much for me like forget it (laughs) this is this will never happen for me or or forget it I don't want to believe in you know the Lord's promises anymore I could have said that but I didn't so um it was just a, a test in my faith as well so we ended up moving to Nebraska so we ended up taking the trip we was trying to look for house but it was hard because she ended up catching COVID. We had to go to the uh, the ER. Now she had COVID. Um, and then that night when we was in the hotel, she told me when I woke up, she said it was witchcraft going on. She said my wallet was flat on the surface and it just flew off. Um, yeah, like I know it sounds crazy, but I just want to explain the story because it's just, it's, it, it was so crazy because you know how, now mind you, we were in a hotel You know how in hotels they have like the bed and then they have the TV right across from it and they have like a a desk that the TV TV is sitting on? And I didn't, okay, so you know how stuff might fly off the table if it's like something really light or if you like run past it and the wind might blow it off? Okay, I was not moving at all. Everybody was asleep, nothing was moving, but his wallet was sitting on top of the um, TV stand across from me so I wasn't even next to it and mind you it's not like wallets are pretty heavy he's it was like a black leather wallet and it had stuff in it like cards and stuff so there's no way it could have but it literally flew like it, it was sitting like this and it literally like jumped off like it didn't it literally jumped off and I was so I was so scared but it was like I could tell that the enemy was really trying to attack us and really trying to like scare us because I feel like we were trying to do so many things to progress ourselves and the enemy will always try to like knock us down. Um, so we ended up moving to Nebraska. So we drove to Nebraska. I'm talking about, I wouldn't say instantly, but as soon as we got there, I already knew how, I already already pictured how it was going to be. It was hectic. It was a lot of spiritual warfare. You know what I'm saying? The enemy was trying to use different people and stuff like that. It was nice. It was cool. We ended up trying to look for a place. But I noticed any time we looked for a place, it was just like it wasn't, it was either in the hood or it wasn't the place that we wanted or, you know, just stuff like that. All through 
all throughout those challenges, I feel like it only strengthened our marriage even more because like I used to think like, why, why does it seem so hectic? Like, why are we moving around so much? Why is, you know, it say, it seemed like we were just going with the flow, but really uh, we were letting the Lord guide us because um, even though we went through those things, I feel like it made us stronger in each other and stronger in the Lord because um, I would say like as far as marriage goes, you truly see how you guys operate together as a team when you go through hard, when you go through like problems and hard times. And like never once during those times did we ever think like maybe this is not going to work. It was never that. It was always like, you know, what are we going to do next? How are we going to how are we going to do this next? And what should we do about this? We would always just talk about um, things that we want to do, things that we need to do together um, and, you know, things that we needed to consider when it came to moving around. Um but it just strengthened our marriage even more. But it also showed me, I would say for me, like it showed me, um, you know, it gave me more, it gave me more trust in him, not just like trust in general, but like trust to lead, uh, like to lead the household, trust to, you know, that we can go through life and maneuver through these things and through these problems. We could do it just fine because I had a husband who was submitted to the Lord and that alone gave me so much peace and so much like, you know, almost as if like we can get through anything because we have God in the center of our marriage. Um, so that's the way that I view it when I, when I think about those times is just like, testimony after testimony because we um we stuck together through everything and that's something else that i add on to it's easier for a man to run than it is to stay it's harder for a man to stay than it is for a man to leave it's very difficult okay See, and it's the thing too. Have we gone through times and the enemy tried to say, oh, this is not going to work out? Yes, he done tried to put that in my mind, but this is the thing. First of all, my wife came from the Lord. Second of all, I have children. I'm not going to leave. Then third of all, Lily says in the Bible, says the only reason why you should leave your spouse is if they cheat on you. We haven't cheated on each other. I'm not going nowhere. And I'm not going to run off, okay? Because, you know, when I was first born, my, my father, he he left. But my stepdad was right there but even before I was born. So the thing is, I can't follow in that gen- I The Lord used my stepfather to break that generational curse off of me. Because, you know, my daughter, she didn't have no dad. So the Lord is using me to break that generational curse off of, you know, my daughter, Okay. So the thing is, the Lord was using these tough times to minister to us, to keep going, not to give up, to strengthen our marriage. And on top of that, was marriage easy? No, it wasn't because at that point, all that moving around and and, and struggling and, you know, just it was just a whole bunch of not being established, but the Lord was the one that was going to establish us. Okay. So long story short, it was a situation that happened at, you know, her mom's house and argument broke out and then she almost had a miscarriage and it was rough because I was upset and I was angry and you know I remember what happened the Lord told me I was I was working at Javi the Lord told me clear as day he said I clocked out for break the Lord said go back home I said okay as soon as I get back home I seen my wife packing the stuff up she was like we need to go and the Lord was like go I said all right and I'm laughing because I clocked out for a break and I ain't never came back. So we ended up moving, not necessarily moving, we drove back to Atlanta. My uncle and my aunt that live in Chicago, they owned a, a house down the street. Uh, 
We were staying right by Full Heights. We was in Beacon Hill. If you know anything about Beacon Hill, that's the hood. You know what I'm saying? That's literally where I grew up in. Um, we moved there. And I ain't gonna lie, I had a lot of good memories. I had a lot of good times there, but it was hectic too. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. It wasn't the most amazing place. It was a one-bedroom apartment. It was upstairs. Beneath it was a shed. We had a dog. My wife pregnant. We had my daughter, me, my wife. So it was like five people living in a one-bedroom apartment. We were staying in the trap. Um, but it was a blessing, though. But only thing is, it was just like, see, it's crazy because when I was in the world, I used to love living in the hood because I'm like, this is where I'm from. I'm from the trap. And I, you know, I just all that type of stuff. But it's crazy how as soon as you start following God, I went back there and I said, man, I hate it here. I used to, I went from loving it to I can't stand being in this place because we was hearing gunshots all the time. It's people walking around. It's, it's I'm going to say this, it was People on crack walking around. I ain't going to call them crackheads, but people on crack walking around, shaking the garbage can behind our house, trying to see what's, what they can find in the garbage can. But it was a lot of times the Lord was blessing us financially to go out and do stuff. Um, he was having us stay in a hotel, especially the 4th of July, because, you know, 4th of July, they get down. They start shooting like a mug out there, so we bounce. Um, but, yes, in, even in our marriage, yes, you're going to argue. It was a lot of times we had arguments. It was a lot of times we had disagreements. But the thing is, the Lord would always correct both of us. The Lord would correct me. He would correct her. Um, he would correct us in a dream. He would correct us audibly. You know what I'm saying? Because he wouldn't like when we argue. Because even though, yes, you in a tough situation, you feel like y'all not being hurt by each other, God correcting both of y'all because he's trying to tell y'all, you literally coming up against your own anointing because when God put us together, he said, two become one flesh. We have an anointing together. So by us constantly butting heads, arguing, going at going at each other, God getting upset is breaking his heart because he like, this is my daughter, this is my son, and look how you treating each other. It's not look how you treating that person. It's look how you treating each other because when you look in the mirror, you're not just looking at yourself. You're not just looking at your spouse. You're looking at Christ. So when you look in the mirror, you're looking at you, your spouse, and the Lord. That's the thing. You're going to have arguments. You're going to have disagreements. But the thing is, it's about how you handle the disagreements. It's about how you handle the arguments. One thing that I've learned to do, and I and I try to do my best when I get upset, like when we argue, first of all, I try not to argue. And then if we do argue, I, we try not to raise our voice because my wife's daughter, she been through trauma. So anytime it seemed like to her we arguing, she go like this. She cover her ears. I be trying to be sensitive to that type of stuff. Like one, one of the things that I feel like we've, been able to work on really good is whenever we did have something to talk about like let's say there was something that I felt like we disagreed on instead of bringing it up then and there like in front of the kids we try to do it like we'll say we'll talk about it when the kids are asleep or you know in our uh, when it's just me and him time then we talk those things out because we have to be mindful of what we're showing our kids even if it's just something as small as a disagreement um i feel like we've gotten really good when it comes to that and also like when it comes to the correction thing i feel like it it just it just lets me know in my heart all the time that this truly is my kingdom spouse because if it wasn't the lord would not be correcting us so quick when like you know something is off um i feel like a lot of you know people in the world or worldly couples they might argue or treat each other a certain way and then they not even think nothing of it or even care and like they just think that it's okay to treat each other that way but like when you're in a kingdom marriage and you're truly your foundation is truly on god he's going to correct you because just like jalen said um we're not just you know we we don't just belong to each other we we both belong to the lord so it's like if i treat him a certain way i have to understand that this is the lord's son that i'm that i'm treating and vice versa it's not just 
I'm his wife. That's the person he's dealing with. He's also dealing with the Lord's daughter. So um, I feel like the Lord is always good when it comes to correcting, at least for me. Like, even if it's not right away, the Lord will, will correct me and have me go back and like apologize or um yeah stuff like that but it's just when you are in a marriage you have to let go of like a lot of pride and I feel like that's that's something that the Lord worked on with me when we first got married was like um owning up to those things the flaws or the things that I probably knew that I needed to work on or maybe I didn't know I needed to work on I feel like time and time again the lord would always either put it on my heart or like he would reveal it to me or like i would be watching a sermon or something or core class and then i feel like something hits home and then right after class i'm like oh i need to go talk to my husband because the lord will correct us when 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 you know it's our marriage is established by the lord because he's not gonna want us to um he doesn't want us he doesn't want that in our marriage he doesn't want that in any of the marriages that that he puts together so um yeah he put us together for a reason and i feel like um yeah i don't know see even when it come to that you know you just gotta just run everything by the lord okay then another thing so after we was in chicago um you know it was tough it was hectic it was a lot of spiritual warfare and then i remember um she ended up having Judah early. Judah came early, and um, he was in the, I can't remember what it was, the, the NICU. Um, if y'all, y'all, it's, it's a marriage test, not a marriage, it's a testimony when she gave birth. Um, man, they they hit her, they put the, uh, the epidural in the back. They thought it hit her spine, I thought it hit her spine, I thought it was it. Um, and then on top of that, when he came out, he wasn't, I didn't know that baby's supposed to cry as soon as they come out. He didn't cry. He was just chilling. I'm like, okay, he good. But then, like, he's just like, nah, he ain't good. And he ended up crying. Um, and they put um, they put the little tube on him. Um, I ain't going to go too into detail, but it was a lot of times during the hospital. When we was in the hospital, they was the enemy was trying to take him out. Like his face turned blue. The the little the 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 wires, whatever you call it, the little beepers, the beepers was going off. He he stopped breathing at one point, and I'm literally sitting there looking, and I'm like, and I hear the Lord, he want me to get a testimony. The night he was born, the Lord told me to take some oil in there and pray over him. I prayed over him, and I actually spilled the oil by accident. The next morning, we came, and I seen the oil was still under the couch that spilled, and that's when the enemy tried to kill him. But since I was obedient to the Lord, that oil that was there, because I prayed over oil, that the oil that was on the floor, that oil that was there anointed the room and sanctified the room, and that's what kept Judah from dying because the presence of the Lord was there. If I didn't be obedient to the Lord, Judah wouldn't be here, okay? I can't tell you how many how many times the enemy tried to take this man's life, but again, no weapon formed against you or your family shall prosper. And I feel led to pray. Lord, I pray for everybody watching, and I'm stretching my hand in faith. Y'all can lift your hands up, Lord. I pray right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, that whatever the enemy is trying to do, whatever he's trying to use to come up against you and your family, we cast it out right now because the Lord is saying the blood of Jesus is on you, over you. The same way how the blood of Jesus, how the blood of the lamb was on the doorpost and the death angel came through, the Lord said that same grace is upon you because your house is hit with the blood of the lamb. With the blood of the Lord, with the blood of the Holy Ghost, you've been washed clean. You don't have to worry about anything happening to your children or your family members because they've been saved, sealed, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit as long as you keep continuing to follow the Lord. It's crazy because when we was in Chicago, the Lord, he had put it on my heart to read this story, and I found out what dedicating your child to the Lord was. Every night when my wife was pregnant, I don't think I missed, I probably barely missed today, I would pray over her stomach every single night. I would pray, 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 okay? And then when he was born, we couldn't take him home for two weeks, and that was heavy on my wife. It didn't really affect me that much, but it affected her. And then I remember we finally took him home, and then I'm going to tell you how the enemy started to play, okay? We took him home, and then we started noticing um, changes in our daughter. The enemy started trying to play. And I was wondering, I'm like, 
Cause I mean, we first I was laughing because when when Judith first came home, we brought Ari. We was like, "Come look at your brother," and she was just like, "It's almost like she was scared of him. Like she ain't like she she looked like she looked like he was like an alien or something like that." But I noticed the enemy was playing with her mind because she was always used to being the only child, and I could tell that it kind of made her feel some type of way. The enemy, uh, the Lord allowed the enemy to come in. Um, and it was to test not just my wife's faith, but it was to test my faith as well. Um, cause again, I noticed it was just a lot of change in her behavior and stuff like that. And also she ain't, she wasn't used to having a sibling, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and she would just, sometimes she would act out for attention cause she never, she had never did that. But like I said, I knew it was all, it was just the enemy trying to attack her, trying to play with her mind, trying to make her feel like she was pushed to the side when she wasn't, you know? Um, and what we had to do, we had to pray. And and there's another thing. When it came to that, the enemy was trying to cause division between me and her. But the thing is, that's why you have to constantly pray. You got to fast for your children. You got to keep them covered. Um, and again, the thing is, the reason why you got to keep them covered is because if we wasn't believers, the enemy wouldn't bother attacking Judah. He wouldn't bother attacking Aria. But the the fact that we believe in the Lord, we praying for their salvation. Yes, he gonna attack because he don't he don't want them to have no 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 business being saved. He don't want them to have nothing to do with loving the Lord. But again, the scripture says, "You train up a child in the way that they should go, so that they won't depart from the faith." Okay, when we moved. When we finally moved, because we had saved up a lot of money, and we moved, and it wasn't easy. It was a it was a small little house that the Lord had blessed us with, um, but we was thankful. And, you know, that was our first house, and, yes, it was a whole bunch of ups and downs. Financially, we were struggling real bad. The YouTube was down, you know what I'm saying? But it's crazy how even though we was fi we were struggling financially real bad, the Lord made a way every single time, every single time. Was it a couple times we was late on the rent? Yes, but it was only, it was really only like one time we was late on the rent. Keep in mind, we struggled for a whole year. We was only late on the rent one time. And the crazy thing about it was, it's all, it, it was all our faith in the Lord. And the thing is, she, she, she was our, she's already been through her wilderness season. My wilderness season started October 2021. And then going into 2022, it was still going on. And, um, you know, being in that house, it was, a, it was a heavy wilderness season because, you know, the enemy attacking the kids, the enemy trying to take out Judah. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole bunch of stuff he was trying to take him out with. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was, it was times we had to rush to the ER, and God was just keeping them covered the whole time. You know what I'm saying? And, um, man, I just remember, again, struggling financially. It was just like, man, like, am I ever going to get out this 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 rut, this financial rut? You know, is the YouTube going to go? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it, it was just it was just a lot to go through. But the thing is, the wilderness is to test you, to, to show you that you don't need anything except God. That's it. You don't need money. You don't need car. Anything material, you don't need. The only thing you need is Jesus. Not even food because it's in the word. It said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Is it easy? No, it's not. But this is the thing. This is the only thing that got me through it. My faith in the Lord and staying firm in the Lord. Because, again, a lot of times when people in the wilderness season, they tend to leave the Lord. They say, you know what, I'm done. I'm about to go back to the streets. I'm about to hit the streets. I'm, I'm done with this. See, this is the thing. You can't get your breakthrough unless you get through the wilderness. Because if you leave and you say, I'm done with this, guess what's going to happen? You made all this progress to get to your breakthrough. And then you, you walk away. So then God has to add on to the wilderness. You can't shorten it, but you can certainly add on to it. That's the last thing that you want.
Like, for example, witches, ex-witches that followed the Lord, then they say, I'm done with this. I'm going back to witchcraft. See, that, that's why in the Bible says you have to, you, you really got to be strong in your faith. And it's not even you doing it. It's the Lord that gives you the strength to be strong in your faith. But you have to do work on your part, too, because that's why the Bible says faith without works is dead. It's the reason why that says that. Because if you not actively working out your salvation with fear and trembling, you can't expect to grow in your faith. It was a lot of times I wanted to give up. It was a lot of times I wanted to say, man, I'm done with all this, but God wouldn't let me. He kept me. Because he, when you follow on God and you constantly do it when you say God has no choice but to keep you. It's not easy, but again, the only reason why we're still together to this day is because I love for each other. It's the Lord. And also, you can't just give up on somebody. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it. Me giving up on my spouse is like me just saying I'm I'm done with the Lord. It's the same thing. Because you coming in the covenant not just with that with my wife, but with the Lord. Okay? So, um, we went through all that. And then I remember... Um, our car broke down. Well, no, it didn't break down. We I got in a car accident, and we had to go through that, and um, we didn't have a car for about a for about a month, and that was that was hectic and stuff like that, and um, you know it was just it was just a lot that really challenged our marriage, but it made us stronger. It really, really made us stronger. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying because. Like it takes a lot of, it takes, it. it's easier to just leave than it is to stay and get through things together. But that's the beauty of it. And that's why, um, um, how, would, how do I say it? Yeah, I feel, I just feel like the love that we have for each other, like the love that I have for him there's no way I could look at something as small as like difficulties going through things as to like a reason of me actually leaving and breaking a covenant. Like I just can't see myself ever doing that. So um, no, it's not always easy when you go through ups and downs, but staying with each other and having each other to lean on when you do go through those ups and downs is anything that I could ever ask for. And a lot of times, I was just telling Jalen this earlier that, because the type of person I am is I like to worry, well, I don't like to, but I worry a lot, and I've been trying to work on that, but I get stressed out easily, I get very overwhelmed easily, and I worry a lot, so... I feel so blessed and so thankful to have a husband like Jalen because when I do feel like we're going through something or I'm stressing out about something and I ask him, like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? He always brings me back down to where I need to be. He always makes me he always makes me feel safe and secure because seeing him and his faith in God and knowing that God is always going to provide for us, knowing that everything's going to be okay. It, it gives me, it makes me more at ease and it makes me realize like, wow, I need to have, I need to keep my faith just like how he has his faith because there may be times where it might look like the Lord is not like stepping in on something, but he is. And my husband always reminds me, of that because I can just see it all through him just how like calm and collected he is when it comes to certain things because he knows that our God will provide but sometimes um I might have doubt or I might get stressed out but um yeah I, I'm very thankful to have somebody like that um because it, it makes it just so much more easier to get through things together it's easy being married no it's not marriage is gonna have its ups and downs and you know um even being in that house the way how the lord blessed us was i remember the lord had told me to fast 
I mean, when I did my fast, it was like a 10 day Daniel fast just for 10 days. And I remember when I came off the fast, I seen this video pop up on my phone. It was a lady that said, in three days, you're going to receive your miracle. I said, okay, Lord. I said, I believe you. So long story short, something just told me go online, start looking at houses. We was laying in the bed and I seen this house and I showed my wife and I was like, I think she might like this house. I showed it to her. She fell in love with the house and then I called the realtor. And she was like, y'all can come look at it. So I didn't realize it was like in a couple of days. So I didn't realize the third day was the day we was going to look at the house because I mean, we drove to church and I remember the pastor had gave a word and it was titled, The Burden Has Been Lifted. But before he released the title, they was worshiping. They worshiped for probably about two hours straight. They ain't never worshiped that long before. Everybody in the church. And it let me know. I'm like, okay, God really about to give me my miracle because today, the third day, we about to go see this house. We really about to get this house. Soon as church ended, we rushed out of there. We went to go look at the house. That, it rest is history. We got the house in Jesus' name. Um, I, it, it was all it was all the Lord how He did it. I can't man look. This house been a blessing, and God He really been showing up, showing out. Um, it's been just it's been it, it's 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 just been a blessing all around. You know what I'm saying? Um, has it still been ups and downs? Yes, it has. And you know the enemy been trying to attack, you know, but it's it's okay because anytime the enemy will try to show us something or he try to make it seem like it's coming from the Lord, you always take it back to the Lord. You always back it up with scripture. And you say, Lord, show me what's going on right now because I need to know, and He'll show you. He will show you what's going on. Um, and basically, this like I said, this summer. It'll make three years since we, you know, been married. Um, so, you know, and also, I want y'all to get ready because this, us doing these videos, it's going to be a whole lot of this. I'm talking about consistently. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a, it's going to be a whole lot of this. Obviously, we're going to need another camera because. I want three camera angles up in here, and I want it to look nice. We're in the classroom. We're not in the YouTube room. Um, so we we just expect just – I want you to just expect a lot of videos from us. It's going to be – play. it's going to be a whole, like, playlist. It's going to be about marriage, marriage tips. We're going to have one about, uh, like, marriage counsel. We're going to have one about um, how to raise godly children, how to raise your children, having blended families. You know what I'm saying? Having boundaries when it comes to certain people in your family, stuff like that, because we ain't compromising over here. We ain't compromising for nobody. You know what I'm saying? So, all in all, just uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, and it's gonna be reaction videos too, from both of us at the same time, sitting right here in this seat. So, yeah, y'all just be expecting. So I wanted to give. Um just like a little hope for people who are um praying the for the oh yes um well first i want to get i wanted to say that um if you're looking if you have a desire to have a kingdom spouse one day um keep praying to the lord because he's faithful and the thing is god knows exactly what we what we need versus what we might want and i learned that because when he blessed me with my husband i was not asking him for i wasn't being like oh i need a man that can do this and that and a man that's like this and that i literally had the mindset of like focusing on myself and on the lord and the thing is we might ask the lord for you know so many things and what we want in a spouse but God knows that's not what we need in a spouse the Lord knows exactly who we need and what we need and I feel like that's exactly what the Lord gave me um but it's because I was patient and I I relied on the Lord to do it for me so I wasn't like and there's nothing wrong with like going out looking for husbands but 
Um, I feel like the reason why the things happened the way that they did is because I surrendered to the Lord and I just basically put it in his hands. I was like, I don't really think that I am, that I need anybody or that I'm capable of having somebody that serious any, like at all anymore. (laughs) Um, But I relied on the Lord and he, I feel like he just, like he just told me, you know, I'm giving you a husband and this is what you need and this is who, who you need. And it's much more better when you do it that way because sometimes we might think that we're making a good decision for ourselves and we're not. So um, I don't want you guys to get discouraged by feeling like you can't find that perfect somebody because the Lord will perfectly handpick your spouse for you in due time. You just have to surrender to him and let him do it. Um, and then I also wanted to answer a question somebody asked me about the topic. What if I'm in a relationship and I have kids and I'm not married? Wait, what if I'm in a relationship and I have kids and I'm not married? What would be fornication no matter how long we've been together? So this is a tricky question because I feel like I fell I fell into the enemy's trap before when it came to this. Um, when I this was like after I had my daughter and I used to think like, OK, well, we already had a child together. So I, I for some reason, the enemy had me thinking like, well, God is not going to be mad at me because we already had a child. So like it would make a difference if we're having sex, if I'm if we've been together for, you know, this many years. But um, it is fornication and it is outside of marriage because you're not married, even though you have kids, you're still fornicating because it's outside of marriage. So it'd be different if you guys were married, no matter how long you are together. If you're not married, anything outside of marriage is fornication. So um, and I also want to say this because I don't want people saying, "Okay, well, you did it. Um, There became a there became a time where I literally told that person and we were mind you we're still to get we were still together I was like it's a sin to have sex outside of marriage and we're not married so I literally told this person that I didn't want to have sex anymore and that just goes to show that um no it's not easy to like fight our flesh but the Lord tells us to do it every day so every day is going to be a fight but um I made that decision because I'm knew that I no longer wanted to live in sin and it's not just that it was like other things that the Lord was pulling me away from as well so it was like I made the switch to like okay I need to get back serious with living for the Lord and whatever precautions I had to take doing that I didn't care because I wanted to live for the Lord and I wanted to see a change in my life and I wanted to see a change in my um, relationship with the Lord so I sacrificed those things because I love Jesus and I I loved him and I wanted to make him happy and I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to live like that anymore. So even though it's hard, if that person, what I do, if that person truly loves you, then they, it wouldn't bother them if you were to tell them like, Hey, I know we have kids, but we're not married. And I, want to practice I don't want to fornicate outside of marriage that person is either going to a be like you know what I love you so I'm willing to wait and we'll just work on getting married or they might feel like it's a bit extreme um but that that that's something that you guys can take up with the Lord together um but definitely pray about it and see um what the Lord would like what he's speaking to you about that um, but if it is outside of marriage, it is fornication. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So that's our marriage testimony. Like I said, y'all just be uh, on the lookout for when we post, you know, more videos. So I end with a prayer. So, um, man, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. Lord and Lord, I ask that you let this video reach many. I ask that you let it minister. That people understand, that people understand what it's like to be a godly spouse, a godly husband, godly wife, 
in all areas. Amen. We pray, amen.